we're going to go over the most common straw man argument you hear from post tribbers and the satanic non dispensationalists. They'll always say there is no mention of the rapture before 1830, 1830. They'll, they'll parrot it like a bunch of heretical Satanists that they are. They'll parrot it 1830, 1830. Here's how you answer them on that. First of all, show them the scores of proof that proves that the belief of the pre-tribulation rapture goes back way before 1830. There's the Shepherd of Hermes, the Catholic Councils, a lot of the early Catholic you know, councils, they condemned a lot of the pre-millennial, pre-tribulation rapture beliefs. There's writings about different, they, they call it different economies, but, they, but there's, there's writings about different dispensations all the way back in the second century. There's so much proof this 1830 law has been disproven so many times. But here's the thing though, the standard is what does the Bible say, not who came up, came up with what first. You see this reasoning of, oh, 1830, oh, because it was invented in 1830, that means we don't, we don't believe in it. That's Catholic reasoning. Catholics say that well, the historic position of the church, see Catholics, they'll say that because the doctrine goes back hundreds of years, that makes it authoritative. No, the standard is, what does the Bible say? Not who said what first. So even if the rapture even was only invented in 1830, if the Bible teaches it, you believe it, okay? Bible trumps, the Bible trumps man's tradition. So what are you going to go by? Are you going to go by the Bible or man's tradition? I'll, I'll put it this way. Even if the post-trip, not post-trip, even if the pre-trip rapture was only invented in 1990, Okay, what does the scripture say? If it teaches it, you go by it. Okay, scripture overthrows man's tradition. So are you gonna follow the scriptures or, or follow what the church has always believed? And again, it's total, total Catholic reasoning. Oh, so because the belief doesn't go back hundreds of years, that, doesn't mean we, that means we don't believe in it. You know, totally Catholic reasoning. That's what Catholics do. You argue with Catholics, you try to tell them that here's what the Bible says. They'll always say, they'll, they'll bring up quotes from saints in the first century because they're saying that because the doctrine is old, that because the doctrine goes back hundreds of years, that automatically makes it authoritative. No, it's not, the standard is not who came up with what first. The standard is what does the scripture say? So that's how we answer this, this common straw man argument from these post-tripper heretics. That's what they are, a bunch of heretics. And I believe many of them will be going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because they're not saved. I, I believe that so because I believe there are some that could be saved they're just caught up in this but the ones that are just will not be corrected I believe they will be going into the time of Jacob's trouble because they're not saved they will not be leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble and if you want some good proof on that that will be leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble you can go to Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 5 I've done this in the other video but here's like if, you, if they say give us one verse that proves the pre-trib rapture here's your one verse that proves it Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 5 yeah, or one to four, sorry. And Saul, yet breathing on threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus and to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they be men or women, that he might bring them bound to unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined a light around, uh, shine around about him, a light from heaven. Not the best at reading. Uh, and he fell uh, to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So wait a second, Saul, what the apostle Paul, first called Saul, was persecuting the body of Christ. He never attacked Jesus Christ, but Jesus says he's persecuting me. Why? Because he's persecuting his body. But hang on a second. In Revelation chapter 5, Jesus Christ is opening the seals during the time of Jacob's trouble. So wait a second, if the body of Christ goes into the time of Jacob's trouble, that would mean that Jesus Christ is opening the seals on himself. Because he'd be doing it on his body. I mean, you see, the, you see the line of reasoning? The body of Christ cannot go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Because if so, then Jesus Christ would be pouring out the seals on himself. So, that, and there's so much other proof as well. There's like Genesis 18, where God does not punish the righteous with the wicked. All this other stuff. There's so much proof. There's... There's a, he, you know, talking about how, how there's like, how, has to be, there's how somebody has to be taken out of the way before the Antichrist can show up in second, or second Thessalonians chapter two. There's so much proof that this proves it. But again, you say, oh, 1830, it came up in 1830. No, the standard is what does the Bible say? Not who said what first. Okay. So wanted to, wanted to uh, get that out there. Don't be deceived by the satanic post-trip heresy. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.